Hey, so I'm going to show some very subtle and important mobility exercises for both the lower and the upper body. Um, mobility work is really important in addition to flexibility work and strength work. Um, but this is going to be very subtle and very small movements um, for people who may have hip issues or back issues or um, can only work laying down. Um, and also, these are things that can be done both laying down and standing up. So I'll try and show variations of all of this um, laying down and standing up. So starting on your back. With the feet planted into the floor, palms are up towards the ceiling if they can be. If you have an injury, otherwise you can do whatever you need to do with your hands. But for those of you who can have the arms down, palms are up. This is what's called anatomical position. It allows your shoulders to roll open so you're not hunched in the chest. Okay, deep navel to spine, always. Thinking about breathing deeply in and out. We're going to think about exhaling and using your exhalation for each movement. So we're going to very start super simple with some spine articulation, starting from the tailbone. You're going to lift that tailbone up and slowly roll up through the spine, one vertebra at a time. Your arms should be nice and relaxed. At the top, you're going to squeeze your glutes, squeeze your hamstrings. Make sure your legs are as parallel as possible. Deep breath at the top and then slowly rolling down, one vertebra at a time. And you'll do that about five to 10 times, breathing and it's nice and slow. And then slowly rolling down. And that's just gonna help to loosen up your spine. And then you can let the knees rock side to side to sort of loosen up your rotation. Lower back, you might get a little pop or two, that's okay. Still maintaining a nice navel to spine connection throughout. Okay, settle into neutral. Do that about eight times. Then we're gonna start by just moving the hips very gently. Keep the navel to spine connection, of course, and on your exhalation, you're gonna bring your knee to your chest. And then you're gonna inhale as the leg goes down. Now, without any hip, hip shifting or movement here, you're gonna go ahead and lift the other leg up. Inhale as it goes down. Keeping everything nice and solid here. Exhale to lift and lower. Exhale to lift and lower. And you're gonna do that about 10 times each leg. Alternating sides. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do includes now the knee. So you're gonna bring that knee in with an exhale, press the leg out, making sure that the leg isn't going too low and that it's pulling your back off. You wanna keep your abs pulled tight and your leg at that level that you can still maintain this connection. Then you're gonna to exhale to bring the leg in. And we'll do that about 10 to 15 times. Okay, we'll do that again on the other side. Same thing, about 10 to 15 times. Maintaining this deep connection all the way around. Arms down, okay? Next one we're gonna do, picking that leg up. We're gonna stretch that leg up towards the ceiling. Now I'm flexible, so I can take my leg here. But for those of you who are less flexible, you're going to take that knee away and stretch the leg out so that it's straight. This is to help increase the flexibility in the hamstring, but to work that knee mobility in its full range of motion. Good. And again, about 10 to 15 times. And the same thing on the other side. Maintaining that navel to spine connection. Good. The next one, we're gonna take that leg up towards the ceiling. Now it might not go perfectly straight if you're tight here, and that's okay. We're gonna lower the leg down. Again, don't let your back arch off, keep the muscles pulled in tight. Take that leg down. When it goes down, get it as long as it can go, and then bring it up. And if you have to bend the knee to bring it all the way up, that's fine, do that. And again, about 10 to 15 times, the exhale is on the lift. And then you'll do the same with the other leg, about 10 to 15 times. Good, okay? And then again, after you've done all of those, let the knees rock gently side to side to release the low back in rotation. And then we'll go again into spine articulations about five to 10 times, nice and slow. Okay, so we've done some hip mobility, some knee mobility, and some spine mobility. 
Now we're gonna go into a little bit of upper body. So we're gonna go ahead and bring the elbows into a bent position, and we're gonna stretch and bend those arms like a chest press, but very gently. And this you can do about 10 times, 10 to 15. Now, of course, all of these things with the arms you can do with weights in hand if you can hold weights in your hands. There are some people who might not be able to, and that's okay. You'll just do this for movement for now. And when we get to strength stuff, then you would add weights. So after about 10 to 15 times that, you're going to open the arms out to the side. Now, I don't have a lot of space over here, so I'm going to let my arm bend. And then close. Arms as long as you can get. This is to open the chest. And we're working the shoulder in full range of motion, opening and closing in a fly, that again 10 to 15 times. Next, we're going to take the arms overhead, palms up towards the ceiling, as far back as you can take them where your back doesn't arch. Keep those abs engaged. Let the weight of your arms fall as far back as they can go, and then bring them up towards the ceiling. And back with an inhale, up with an exhale. Now you might notice one side is tighter than the other. One might be able to go a little further than the other. That's okay, just work with that strength and range of motion. And eventually you can work unilaterally, so you do this with one arm. That way you can work on the mobility of one arm by itself. And there. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, and starts here, we're gonna pull the arms down and then press them back out along the floor. Pull them down, elbows come down as far towards your hips as they can go, and then pressing up, pulling down, pressing up. Again, 10 to 15 times. Good, after 15, you're gonna let your arms settle here, and again, try to let your hands fall to the floor. They may not go all the way, but we're working on that rotation. So from here, now you're gonna just bring them up. Keep your elbows touching the floor. And then up, down, and up. Okay, 10 to 15 times of that. Now bring your elbows into your sides. Same concept, but now you're gonna let your hands fall out. And then let them close. Your elbows should stay on the floor. Hands fall out. And then close. Open. And close. Open. And close, 10 to 15 times that. And rest those arms. Okay, so another exercise you can do, and I gotta move so I have a little more space, is circling those arms. So you're gonna cross them over your chest, cross them as far over each other as they can go. Don't just let them cross at the wrist. Try to cross as far up to the upper arm as you can. Back, overhead, and then around. Down, long, and again. Doing that about 10 times in that direction and then 10 times in the reverse. Again, crossing as far up the arm as you can, not just at the wrist. This way you're getting stretch across the back and into your rear deltoids. Again, around, go that way. And again, about 10 times there. So that's some mobility stuff laying on the ground. Of course, there's a lot of other options, but those are just some ideas. Now we're gonna go ahead and stand up and it's important if you have an injury or you're recovering from an injury or even as part of a warm up or a cool down that you do mobility work. Not just static stretches, um, which are good too and they have their time and they have their place, but mobility is just as important because you wanna keep your joints lubricated and those connective tissues all nice and loose, um, especially after you've been lifting or anything like that. So. Similar to what we did laying on the ground, we're gonna start with some hip mobility, so deep core connection, make sure you're in anatomical position. Arms are hanging down by your sides, palms are facing forward, and we're just gonna lift the knee. And lift the knee. Now I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see what's happening with my upper body. Notice nothing up there is moving. I don't want you curving. I want you up nice and tall here, so your navel is pulled to your spine. Nice and slow about 10 times, 15 times with each leg, okay? So that's simple. Then you're gonna take your legs and turn them out so that your knees are pointing out and your toes are pointing out, and you're gonna lift the knees to the side. So you're shifting side to side, it's a little lateral movement. 
But again, we're flexing the hip. Keeping the core nice and tight. We're not tilting the body, keeping it very vertical and strong. Okay, then um, we're gonna take some very simple squat movements. So if you have something you can sit on, this is a little high, let me lower it to the next level here. There. So you can sit at the very edge, feet planted into the floor. Let me take this down a little. Feet planted into the floor. Okay, pulled a little back behind your knees. And you're just going to stand up and you're going to sit down. So this is just a squat modification, really. But again, this is working that mobility in the hips, mobility in the knees, even mobility and strength in the ankles. And you can add to that, that knee lift. And stand, knee lift. And stand. And have your feet hip distance apart. Not too wide and not too close. So you have a nice solid base to stand on. Okay, so that's another option for some mobility there. Um, going on to some upper body mobility standing, we're going to do the arms like we did laying on the ground. So we started with the arms here. You're going to press forward. You can do that 10 to 15 times. You can also press out to the side about 10 to 15 times. Okay, you can do those flies, open and close. Now because the floor isn't beneath us, we have a little more range of motion back here. So let me turn all the way so you can see what's happening. Those muscles come together, your shoulder blades coming together and closing. So really work with a full range of motion there. And you can go down, you can go up. Similar to the circles, but just halfway around. You can do your pulling and pressing. Okay, you can do your little flying things here, like this. You can do these, like this. Okay, all of those different movements that are very subtle in the joints are gonna help to loosen those joints up and keep them lubricated, um, both in the hips, the knees, and in those upper body uh, muscles. So pretty much any exercise that you can, that you can do or have done with weights, are good to do without weights as well to keep your body loose and limber, okay? So hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Little thing to add maybe into your warm up or even your cool down. Um, and that's all. If you have any questions or you need any other ideas, don't hesitate to reach out, vcmfitness.com. Thanks.